I really thought I was going to bed feeling happy tonight, you know, feeling defeated. Time to install this piece that Ben has put so much effort into making because, you know, the turbo is here so we wanted it to grow and this shape was so challenging, I'm so proud of him. We were calling this piece Frankenstein because it was looking rather ugly, but look at this now. It's shiny, smooth and ready to be installed into place, so we're gonna do that now. Good as Our exhaust hose was gone, we were looking everywhere and honestly I had given up, I was about to go and buy a new one and then my dad spotted just a little piece that was sticking out and all the other rest was underground because honestly we've been here for more than two and a half years so it's not a surprise that it was hidden. Yeah, we have this, now we need the other piece, right? Because we have one piece from the engine to the safety box and then one from that box out. What did you just make? That is, I didn't make it. I made one that was too big. That one was ready to plug, where to block off the entrance of the salt water output, which we don't have right now, just to prevent any smoke from coming out. You never lose a pen again. We still didn't make the exit there, so we are having to do uh, adaptation here for the smoke to go out. Because <laughs> I really don't want the smoke all trapped inside the engine. <laughs> and we're going to use a PVC pipe, unfortunately, which is all we have to extend it. Now we know the PVC pipe won't take the heat, so we'll make this test short and efficient. Well, not just short, just very efficient. Now I know this exhaust isn't ideal, the first part is a uh, high temperature exhaust piping, rubbery, rubbery stuff. However this bit that's leading out of here is not the ideal material you want for an exhaust. Anyway it's very temporary, so we'll see how this goes. We are now finishing preparing everything to start testing the engine. And as we are on this, I start feeling butterflies and more butterflies and even more butterflies <laughs> because it's gonna be the time of truth for the effort that Elio and I have been putting together for more than a year now. So I'm, it's really, really a big moment. And I'm very excited and nervous. I'm both equally. <laughs> What I'm about to do now is remove the air from the system and it's one of the last steps before we start this piece. <laughs> we think our battery is old and it's not charging enough for us to start. Well, this might work. We'll see. No. One thing I learned for sure during this whole rebuild is that things don't happen in a linear way. You cannot go from where you are to where you want to go in a straight line. There's always an obstacle. Now the engine is ready, we have all the connections we need, every, every, everything we need for it to start. And of course, the battery is dead and you won't even nothing, like no sign from it. We even have a multimeter here and it's it is dead because it's been without working for two years and it's it's a battery that was on the boat. I don't even know how many years old this battery is. So we cannot do it today. It's almost the end of the day. So you cannot rush to, to go buy a new one right now. But tomorrow I'm gonna come here with a new battery and I'm gonna make this engine start. Like, it's a promise, guys. <laughs> new batteries in the house. <laughs> and now if the engine doesn't work, the problem is something else, so my expectations are even higher. We're making the connections and we're gonna start this engine. Guys, come on, positive energy. 
This is not a fail just to make it very clear. We strangled the engine so it cannot really go on. It's just so it can get some movement of the oil moving before we actually start it. But now, now it's really the time. Let's do this. I am so beyond the moon happy about this working and hearing the engine full throttle inside the engine room. Well, it's not even full throttle yet and it's already super exciting. I'm super, super, super happy. Now what we're gonna test is the gearbox. So I'm gonna go up, move up there. We're gonna see this moving just to check if everything is fine and just keep enjoying this sweet moment. <laughs> Unfortunately, our happiness couldn't last much longer because when we started doing the test going forwards and backwards, we can hear a crooked noise from the gearbox. While it's neutral, it's fine, but when we move it, it has a noise. Uh, the gearbox is one thing that we didn't open. We just changed things from the outside, the bearings and stuff. So this is upsetting news that we still don't know how to fix it, but I'm definitely gonna share with you once we have this figured out. We were expecting maximum an oil leak or something like that. So I am heartbroken to think about having to remove the gearbox and opening up, checking what's wrong. But I guess that's what the future is holding for me. Now it's the end of the day, it's dark, we are staying longer because we are so excited about this. So this is going to be a problem we're going to tackle tomorrow or later this week. I really thought I was going to bed feeling happy tonight, you know, feeling defeated. But I'm not giving up yet. I'm only going to stop once this is fixed. So it's going to be a victory eventually, just not today. Another day that we are here and today I'm feeling very excited. I'm not feeling defeated anymore because I know we're going to fix this. What happened last night? When, once we left the shipyard, I sent a message to our Patreon group that we have on WhatsApp because I'm always updating. We tested the engine, we did this, we did that, everything in real time. And of course, I was celebrating that we tested the engine, but there was also the little problem that we had with the noise in the gearbox. And luckily, we have many patrons that have a lot of knowledge, and they told me that the, probably the reason for the noise is because the gearbox is not uh, loaded with any resistance. It's just the flange that's loose. There's no prop shaft, no propeller, no seawater, not anything. And if we can try to add some resistance, maybe the noise will be gone. So I'm really, really hoping that that's the case. So what we're going to do now is a test, trying to add resistance to the flange to see if the noise is gone. And if that's the case, then you can really celebrate because the test was perfect. Besides that, also a pulley that was moving here on the pump. So we already tightened it. Some smoke escaping from the water system that we already tightened as well. So besides that, it's a perfect sense that we can really sell this. I'm very curious to see what will happen, but I'm very excited and very hopeful. Don't touch anything that's yellow. <laughs> done and we approved everything is working perfectly there's a little leak of smoke coming from this which we're gonna fix there's not a big issue now is the time for the real test which we're gonna move the gear 
forwards and backwards, check for that noise, try to add resistance and see if it gets any better. But so far, this test, everything approved. So you see this here, it means that the gearbox is on neutral and when this is like this, there's no problem. Ben is up there, he's going to change it forwards and backwards and when this moves is when we start having that crook noise. So here we have this wood and Elio is going to try to add some resistance on the flange and then we hope the noise is gone and that it was just all a misunderstanding. <laughs> Thank you so much to our amazing patron crew that's always so supportive not just emotionally but with information i'm so relieved that there's no nothing wrong with our gearbox nothing wrong with the engine i'm just so happy What's really funny is when we used to come in the engine room, it smelled like a new engine room, like paint, whatever, you know, like just new stuff. And now it smells like engine room because the engine's been on a few times. I like the smell better. First things first, we have a huge box of everything that's stainless. And then we go through this box and do a kind of raffle to see what threaded barred screws we can get. We're going to use the same screws as the ones that are in the hole that are holding the planks onto the think, frames. So that shouldn't make the diesel tanks move. We might even strap the tanks down as well, as well as these supports. No, we will definitely. And then I think on one side of this support will be a lug screw and the other side will have just a big nail. And that should definitely hold. We have many, many, many things happening at the same time. We have a juicer installing the diesel tanks. We have my dad working on the engine on the electrical stuff, sensors, uh, starter engine, everything. We have Ben and Nico working on the hull, and we have Marcos working on our roof, sending it. So, a lot of things are happening. I'm gonna try to show you a bit of what it is, but I think this is good to show you how a day a day art actually is. It's a lot of things happening, us running everywhere trying to participate, trying to help, trying to film and eventually getting somewhere. All four diesel tanks are in place, two starboard and two port very happy with how they look for now they're being rested or held in place with uh, wooden very strong uh, supports we would like to strap them down still now uh, they are pointing all four of them are pointing slightly forwards or downwards so that we can make the most of all the diesel in it not that we want to ever get that low down low in diesel we spent a long time deciding and debating which material we wanted for diesel tanks and after looking at lots of pros and cons we went for plastic ones and these are for truck like lorries uh, semis what do you call them whatever country you're in so these are plastic ones that are made for diesel in trucks which is funny because now we've got a mercedes truck engine and four truck diesel tanks what else can we fit on this boat that is made for trucks i wonder 
And one more thing, they're about 210 liters each, or they are 210 liters each. We're gonna start off with this and see how much, how far we get and if we need to add more or not. This drawer is literally something I put together quickly in the workshop just to get the battery off the floor and out of our working area and so we could just work on the sizing and the length of the cables. This isn't the finished product yet, I mean the drawer, the shelf in itself is, but I would like to make the most of this vertical space here and have some more shelves uh, or drawers on top and under just to be able to store a few little things. The distance between the engine and here I think is long enough to not heat the battery up too much. We're also going to keep the temperature down in the engine room. We've got big exhaust vents and we're going to have some big blowers to make sure the temperature in the engine room stays low. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with this. I have sat on it with the battery just to do the test and it's not going to fall off because it's got those little corner pieces. It's going to have some little blocks behind to prevent it from sliding back and we're going to make sure it doesn't come upwards for any reason. This over here is the gasket that was there in the beginning. It was very thin and it's not very squishy in some way, so that's why the smoke was escaping. So with two of these that were going to the to the heat exchanger and they've been replaced with some better ones. We just had to pull the heat exchanger out a bit to fit some new ones in and then in a bit, which was a hell of a job because everything's already attached but we managed to do it thanks to nico as well and uh now he's just gonna he's just gonna fasten the screws while i'm gonna finish on the hull i don't know if you can tell how special this moment of testing the engine and seeing it work was for me because well together with elio we put so much love into this engine we opened it up we removed it from the boat start there and then we did so much inside and I learned so much during this journey, but of course, it was all coming to this moment and it is a happy ending. We did get a little scared before, but now we can say that it is a happy ending. The engine is working as it should and I couldn't be happier. But the engine works are not done yet. Of course, we still need to do the electrics, bring information from the engine up there to the sensors, also connect it to the diesel, connect the diesel tanks with the filter. Well, there is still some stuff that needs to be done, but I think this was a huge milestone. And for now, I'm just gonna celebrate that. I'm gonna think about what I have to do tomorrow. Today, this is it. So that was that. Last little fixes of the engine before we can start working slowly on the additional parts. I'm gonna start painting, so I'm going over the last time with a bit of a sanding machine just to get the last little bumps and stuff out, but uh, soon we'll be painting. That was a lot of engine work, but as you can see, we finally got it running. Also, we're trying to mix the woodwork with the engine work as much as we can, but the engine work just has to be done. And without an engine, we're not leaving this river, so we have to hang in there. We can't tell you how grateful we are for all of your suggestions when we got stuck, not knowing where that rattling was coming from in the gearbox. So for all of you who suggested something, thank you so, so, so much. Also, welcome Ace to the Patreon crew and thank you so much Robert for supporting us through PayPal. And thank you so much Marcus, Michael, Nesta, Greg, Laurie, Dwayne, Wiley and Joseph for hitting that super like button. Thank you so much and thank you all for subscribing to our journey. We really appreciate it. See you next week.